Good morning everyone, in today's session, we will delve into the realm of data types in Java. Understanding data types is fundamental in programming as they define the kind of data that variables can hold. Today, we have an enlightening agenda set in place for our discussion. First and foremost, we will be exploring the primitive data type. Moving forward, we will shift our focus to non-primitive data type. Furthermore, we will be delving into the examples of data types. Data types refer to the different sizes and values that can be stored in the variable. In Java, primitive data types like boolean, byte, character, short, int, long, float, and double are essential building blocks for storing and manipulating data. These data types are used to represent different kinds of values, such as integers, floating point numbers, and characters, in a program. Below is a brief summary of each of these primitive data types in Java. The Boolean data type is used to represent two values, true or false. It is commonly used in conditional expressions and control structures to make decisions in a program. Boolean variables are typically used to store the result of logical operations and comparisons. The byte data type in Java is an 8-bit sine 2's complement integer. It can store values ranging from minus 128 to 127. Bytes are commonly used when working with raw binary data or when memory efficiency is a concern. They are often used in scenarios where memory optimization is crucial. The character data type represents a single 16-bit Unicode character. It can store any character from the Unicode character set allowing for the representation of characters from different languages and symbol sets. Character variables are used to store individual characters, such as letters, digits, and symbols. The short data type is a 16-bit sine 2's complement integer. It can store values in the range of minus 32,768 to 32,767. Shorts are used when a larger range of values than bytes is required but the memory footprint of an int is not justified. They are used in scenarios where memory optimization and a wider range of values are needed. The int data type is a 32-bit sine 2's complement integer. Integers are used for most arithmetic operations, counting, indexing, and general-purpose integer storage in Java programs. The long data type is a 64-bit sine 2's complement integer. Longs are used when an int data type is insufficient to store large integer values. They are used for applications that require a wider range of integers. The float data type is a single precision 32-bit floating point number in Java. It can store fractional numbers with precision up to 7 decimal digits. Floats are used when dealing with real numbers that require floating-point representation, such as scientific calculations, engineering simulations, and graphics programming. The double data type is a double-precision 64-bit floating-point number in Java. It can store fractional numbers with precision up to 15 decimal digits. They are commonly used in financial calculations, scientific computations, and precise measurements. In conclusion, by selecting the right data type based on the requirements of a program, developers can ensure efficient memory usage and accurate representation of data. Strings, classes, objects, arrays, and interfaces are fundamental concepts in programming languages that play crucial roles in software development. Each of these elements serves a specific purpose and contributes to the overall structure and functionality of a program. Strings are sequences of characters that represent text data in a programming language. Strings are commonly used for storing and manipulating textual information such as names, messages, and other data that require textual representation. Classes are blueprints for creating objects in object-oriented programming OOPA. A class defines the properties, attributes, and behaviors methods that all objects of that class will have. Objects are instances of classes that represent real-world entities, concepts, or data structures within a program. Each object has its own unique state, data, and behavior, methods, based on the class it belongs to. 
objects encapsulate data and behaviors, providing a way to model complex systems and relationships in software development. Arrays are data structures that store a collection of elements of the same data type in a sequential order. They are commonly used for tasks such as storing lists of items, iterating over collections, and implementing data structures like stacks and queues. Arrays can be one-dimensional, multi-dimensional, or even jagged arrays of arrays. Interfaces define a contract specifying a set of methods that a class must implement. An interface declares a list of method signatures without providing the implementation details. In summary, strings represent textual data, classes define blueprints for objects, objects are instances of classes with unique states and behaviors, arrays store collections of elements, and interfaces specify contracts for implementing certain behaviors. Let's take a pause and look at the examples from day-to-day -day scenarios. In Java, data types are used to define the type of data that a variable can hold. For example, a variable can hold integers, strings, doubles, or Boolean values. In the context of a shopping application, we might have variables representing total price, quantity of items, customer ID, whether a payment was successful, true or false, and the account balance. These variables can be used to perform calculations, make decisions, and store information. Just like how different types of data can be represented in Java, we can imagine the variability of a rainy day, the changing quantities of items in stock, the unique identification of each customer, the verification of a successful transaction, and the fluctuating account balances. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you found it enjoyable and valuable, I kindly ask you to subscribe to my channel. Your support means a lot to me and subscribing will help me create more content that you might find interesting. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up by hitting the like button. Your feedback is important to me and liking the video will let me know that you appreciate the effort I put into creating it. Sharing the video with your friends, family, or on your social media platforms would be greatly appreciated. By sharing, you are helping me reach a wider audience and grow my channel. Lastly, I would love to hear your thoughts on the video. Please leave a comment below sharing your feedback, suggestions, or any specific topics you would like me to cover in future videos. Your comments help me improve and tailor my content to better suit your interests. Once again, thank you for watching and for considering subscribing, liking, sharing, and commenting. Your support is truly valuable to me and motivates me to continue creating content that you enjoy.